Welcome to worship on this Recharge Wednesday. I am glad that you are here. I'm glad that we're here together in community and online. I'm glad that you have once again tuned in. As you look around uh, this live feed, you'll see a couple of other links. Uh, one is the virtual friendship pad and prayer request form. Please fill that out. Take a moment to fill that out. A second link in the area should be a donate button that you can click if you'd like to make a donation to keep the ministries of this congregation alive and well and to sustain them. Uh, third, a note about this worship service. Uh, we no longer are going outside because we can do a much better recording inside right now and we can't gather anyways. We're afraid that if we opened it up, we'd have a hundred people there because we really, really, really miss worshiping together uh, in person. So we are doing this summer worship service or these services in the sanctuary, but we wanted to bring back an element of the outdoor worship service and that would be the candle lighting uh, during our prayer time. So I encourage you, if you have a moment or if you can take a moment now to find a candle in your home and get ready to light it as a symbol of your prayers, as a symbol that Jesus is that light in the darkness. The darkness will never overcome it. Uh, we'll be lighting some candles here in the sanctuary, those of us who are in this space, uh, as we gather together in prayer. We'll be doing that each Wednesday night now as we continue. Welcome to worship. Uh, joining me this evening, uh, Amber Jackson, Gretchen Bachman, although I spelled her name wrong, I will edit that in the uh, uh, posting here, the Facebook Live posting. We'll get that corrected. I don't know. I put my elbow down or something. Typing is not my thing, but I know how to spell her name. Anyways, uh, Mackenzie Jaronson is in the control booth, and we are here to worship. Let us join together and make a joyful noise. We begin with 10,000 reasons. Let us bless the Lord. village to raise me.
And that's what worship is. It is blessing the Lord, praising the Lord for uh, our Lord's presence, for our Lord's goodness at all times. And now, in tougher times, we ask, we come to our Lord and we ask that he cover us in his wings. And so we sing the song, Still Hide Me Now Under Your Wings. First Bible reading comes from the fifth chapter of Romans. Paul writes, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, 
But we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. The second reading is from Psalm chapter 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, or I will sleep the sleep of death, and my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. And from 1 John chapter 4, starting at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world, so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. This past Sunday, we celebrated the day of Pentecost, that day when we, that we sometimes call the birthday of the church, that time when the Holy Spirit, that same spirit that descended upon and rested on Jesus, descended upon and filled the disciples with love and with courage and with a boldness to tell the world about Jesus. It marked the beginning of the Jesus movement being launched into the world. And here we are tonight on a Wednesday night. Between that day of Pentecost celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit and this coming Sunday which is Trinity Sunday. When we celebrate that holy mystery of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit but one God. And so here we are between two Sundays that lift up the work and the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. I listen to a lot of preachers. I get a a chance online to hear preachers. I get to go to preaching conferences. And in my opinion, my not-so-humble opinion, as I often say, one of the best preachers in our day, and certainly in this country, is Michael Curry. He's the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church in the United States. You might be familiar with him because he preached the sermon at Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding. He had four minutes to preach, according to British expectations. He took 14. Uh, It was a phenomenal sermon anyways. If you get a chance, go back and watch it on YouTube. Anyways, this last Sunday, he prepared a sermon for the National Cathedral, which is uh, uh, an Episcopal cathedral in Washington. He didn't preach it on site, though, because the same reason we're not having people in our space here, the the coronavirus, COVID-19, he prepared it and preached it from his office. What I'm going to be sharing with you in these next few moments are many of his thoughts, many of his words, and certainly his approach. Bishop Curry said, Pentecost in a pandemic. We really do observe this Pentecost in the midst of a pandemic. The pandemic of COVID-19 is real, it is painful, and we pray for the scientists and researchers and all the folk who are working hard to find a way to bring this pandemic to an end. But there's another pandemic, not of the viral kind, but of the spiritual kind. It's a pandemic 
of the human spirit. When our lives are focused on ourselves, when the self becomes the center of the world and of the universe, it is a pandemic of self-centeredness and it may be even more destructive than a virus. And that pandemic is the root cause of every humanly created evil that has ever been made, every war that has ever been fought, every bigotry, every injustice, every wrong that has ever been wrought. Anytime a human being has hurt another human child of God directly or indirectly, explicitly or implicitly, at the root cause is me being the center of the world and you on the periphery. Now, the, the hook, if you will, for this sermon was the African-American spiritual, there is a balm in Gilead. There's a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There's a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. And that balm, that balm is the love of of Jesus, a sacrificial love, a selfless love. There's a verse that says, if you cannot preach like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. We're going to listen to that song now sung by Rachel Kurt, she's a, a Lutheran that's been at many uh, national youth gatherings and other gatherings of Lutherans. She has this soulful version. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the sick soul if you cannot preach like Peter or if you cannot pray like Paul you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for sick soul sometimes I feel discouraged and I think my work's in vain but then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again they Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to save the sin sick soul. There is a Gilead to save 
the sin sick soul. Yes, he will save the sin sick soul. Oh, he will save my sin sick soul. The balm in Gilead that can heal the sin sick soul is the love of Jesus. So let's tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. And all includes not only you and me and those like you and me, but all includes everyone, no exceptions. It includes those unlike you and me in race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, language, socioeconomic class, occupation, and religion. It includes protesters and police. It includes looters and law enforcement. Jesus loves all and died for all. But living that way, and we as followers of Jesus are called to live that way and loving that way. And as followers of Jesus, we are called to love that way can be difficult. As the spiritual says, sometimes I feel discouraged and I think I've lost my way. This past week, we might feel like we've lost our way. This past week, we've not only had to endure a pandemic occasioned by a virus, a viral pandemic, but we've had to endure and face a spiritual pandemic. The killing of George Floyd and the ugly racism that that once again exposed. A spiritual pandemic where one person can look upon another person and despise and reject them, not able to see them as a fellow child of God. Oh yes, sometimes I feel discouraged and think I've lost my way and that we as a society have lost our way. Senseless killings, racisms, racism, protests, rioting, we might think our faith and our living lives of love and proclaiming a God known in Jesus Christ is in vain. Oh Lord, how long? Sometimes I feel discouraged because though I know that love is the way, I also know that I don't always have the power to live that way. But the Spirit of the living God does. Let me say that again. The Spirit of the living God does. If God is love, and God is, and if the Spirit of God is the Spirit of God's essence and heart, and it is, then when that spirit is poured out upon us like it was on that day of Pentecost, the very love that is the heart of God is being poured out upon us and on us and love becomes possible. Oh, sometimes I feel discouraged and think I've lost my way, but then, oh yes, then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. Oh, come, Holy Spirit, Spirit of love, and revive our souls again. May we know as people of faith, revived again and again and again by the Holy Spirit, that we follow in the very footsteps of Jesus and that Jesus, this Jesus taught us that love will make a way out of no way. We must dare to follow Jesus in a way of love that can save us all. We must dare to tell the love of Jesus and say, he died for all. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead 
to heal the sin-sick soul. And now you and I, and we have the opportunity to sing that song. Continue with prayer and with candle lighting. Again, if you have a candle in your home that you'd like to light as a symbol of your prayer, now would be that time. Uh, I'm going to begin praying, and then there will be, thank you, and then there will be uh, some background music during which we will light some candles here, during which you can light your candle during which you can pray. If you'd like to make an offering, uh, perhaps now is the time that you can prepare that. But we'll be praying, we'll be lighting candles, and reflecting on the light of the world. So let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for your presence in our lives and pray that you would pour out your spirit upon each one of us in a powerful way that we might experience your unconditional love that we might be emboldened in our faith and in our speaking of our faith god as we anticipate celebrating trinity sunday may we experience that holy mystery of father son and holy spirit yet one god god on this week when we think about pandemic uh, COVID and that pandemic that is spiritual as well. We pray that you would be with the leaders of the world, the leaders of our nation, the leaders of our state as they work to combat both of those pandemics. We pray, O oh Lord, for a vaccine to be developed. God, we pray that hearts are softened, that repentance happens 
in a nation where racism still runs rampant. We lift you also all of those we are aware of who are sick, those who are dying, those who are lonely, those who are grieving. Wrap them in your arms of love and peace and comfort. God, be with this congregation that in these strange times we can continue to be this family of faith, that we can be faithful in our proclamation, that we can be faithful as we gather online in community to worship, that this would be a time when faith is kindled and grown. God, hear now the prayers of your people as we light candles and as we listen to this song. i 
us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And our last song is uh, uh, based on the Lord's Prayer, as it is in heaven. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.